Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a classic knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the long discontinued Zero Tolerance and RJ Martin 0600. Uh, this was sent to me by Ben, or loaned to me by Ben, along with the BLK version, which is even more rare. Thank you so much, Ben, for letting me take a look. Uh, these are extremely rare and, and extremely sought after um, ZT knives. Um, they go for a lot of money when you can actually find them on the secondary market. They were originally sold in 2012 for, I believe, $400, but uh, rest assured, that price has gone way up since then. Why review something like this if it's not available? For information, for people seeking these out now in 2022 or wanting to figure out, you know, how do these knives compare with folding knives that we can get now, you know, in 2022. Um, so that's essentially who this is for. I've never actually handled these, so this was, you know, also for me. I just enjoy kind of experiencing uh, things that I missed out on. Uh, this was right around, it was, it was a couple of years after I started to really get into knives. And uh, I was definitely a big ZD fan. So um, I, uh, I'm really interested to take a look at these and share some information with you guys. Thanks to my patrons who are supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Zero Tolerance obviously still makes knives. They are a, a USA knife manufacturer and I will link the stuff that they have available right down below. Uh, I know that ZT is not making the stuff that this corner of the knife world likes as much anymore, um, but I wanna remind everybody that they did do some pretty interesting um, you know, sprint runs here. The Emerson and the Sinkovich were actually surprisingly cool sprint runs. So I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who roots for ZT. I'd like to see them do more of what we, you know, loved as uh, people who kind of were enjoying ZT from the 2010 time period up to about the 2016 time period, right? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely still rooting for them. So I'll link ZT stuff right down below uh, if you are new and you want to check out what else they have available. Let's talk about this real quick. What the heck is B75P? That's the steel that this is made out of. That's a carpenter steel, a double melt stainless steel. Uh, stainless properties are similar to 440C, so it's definitely stainless. Um, this is apparently the ex almost exactly the same, if not exactly the same composition as Latrobe BG42, which is also not a steel I am familiar with. So I had to dig a little bit. Okay, take this with a grain of salt, but uh, there was a 2015 thread on blame, blade forms where a lot of people were comparing it with CPM 154. Apparently the general consensus was that this steel performs very similarly to CPM 154. It has a crap load of molybdenum in it, and that is honestly as much as I know. It's capable of Rockwell hardness, I mean, in the appropriate territory, uh, like performance parameters, right? 63, according to Carpenter, which is a US uh, knife steel manufacturer. So there you go, there's the information on the steel. Let's go ahead and get um, a measurement of this guy. This is a freaking huge knife. And if it looks familiar, it's because RJ Martin has, uh, you know, he's a custom knife maker, famous custom knife maker, but he's done so many collaborations and his design language is like instantly recognizable. Um, so you have probably seen RJ Martin designs any, you know, in, in companies that produce inexpensive knives. And you've probably also seen RJ Martin designs in extremely expensive uh, collaboration production knives, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But yeah, there's your info on that. Overall length of this guy. <laughs> Coming in at a whopping nine and a half inches. Blade length is four and a quarter. Yes, cold steel fans, I know that knives get bigger than that. Thank you, you don't have to tell me every time. Cutting edge is coming in at four inches. Let's keep in mind, as I'm reviewing this, this was a design from 2012, which that was 10 years ago. Oh man, that's crazy, 2012 was 10 years ago. Size comparisons up against the, uh, uh, I didn't grab that, there it is, the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. If that puts it into perspective, this is a pretty big knife. Definitely what I would call a large folder. Not an XL folder, but a large folder. I know, Cold Steel fans on that hair trigger. <laughs> this guy must be corrected. Um, let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 
and the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, once again, it's gigantic. And last but not least, we'll do the Benchmade Group Tillion. And well, let's first do the Demco AD 20.5. Always forget about this guy. And then finally, the Benchmade Bug Out. So there you go. How's the action on this guy? 2012 to 2014 is when ZT was starting to figure out exactly what types of, you know, what people wanted in a good flipper. This is an okay flipper. The action is extremely fall shutty. The, um, when you get a hold of the flipper, flipper tabs to do a light switch and not, you can, you can do it with a preload, but for as big a knife as this is, like when it came out in 2012, it was, you know, people, oh man, it's so amazing because it, it was it was rare to get good flipping action, good, uh, in a production folding knife. In fact, I think it was rare just to get it in general. Um, but ZT started to kind of lead um, or, or set the set the bar for good flipping action. Measured up against knives today, uh, I most people are going to call this a detent that's on the lighter side. It does not have that distinct breakaway when you flip it. It almost feels like your the blade is coming out of mashed potatoes that have been left out for a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of mush, right? But you can flip it. There's a lot of leverage here because the blade is freaking thick and huge. So once you pull that lever, it will swing out into the open position. But if you're somebody that's looking to acquire this knife in the secondary market, yeah, the detent is lacking and it definitely feels like it's on the weaker side. That is the case with both of these. These are both really nice examples, perfect condition, um, and they flip um, you know, almost exactly the same. But the action gliding down into the closed position is really good. In fact, that's better than what I would have expected from ZT in 2012. And, you know, compared, like, like the false shuttiness of it is honestly really comparable to some of the nicer stuff that we see currently in the high-end production knife world. Um, carry profile, let's put this guy up against the Spyderco Para 3. Um, it doesn't look horribly thick, that blade stock is really thick, um, but uh, yeah, the titanium scales are a little thicker than the Para 3, and these are also contoured, and let's take a look at these real quick. Golly, that texturing is freaking beautiful. I can already hear the comments, why doesn't ZT make the, why wouldn't, why don't they bring that back? Why don't they make this anymore? If they did this now, if they made this exact knife, which is from 2012 and had a price tag of $400 in 2012, uh, pe people would be out with pitchforks and torches. This is something that would be incredibly expensive for zero tolerance to do right now. And it's just, if, if they did it, people would get upset with the prices. They cannot do this and put a $400 price tag on it. Um, and they don't do a lot of, you know, collaborations and, anymore. They do a lot of in-house designs, which, you know, depending on who you are, you might look at as bad or good. It's just whatever you're going to do with that information, right? But this is not something they could do for, and put a $400 price tag on it in 2022. They just can't, right? Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, the, um, the carbon fiber inlay very cool i love love that texturing that is so beautiful i really like that really nice let's go ahead and measure that blade stock <laughs> i think this is probably 165 perhaps one uh, 185 thousandths um i don't know it just looks very thick to me come on now calipers just really wanting to not start in the right place there we go yeah, that's actually 100, and can we see it there? 186 thousandths. That means that this blade stock is the same as an XM24 or a Microtech Stitch or SOCOM Elite, right? Demco 8020 from the USA. This is a pretty thick blade stock. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think those inlay screws are T6. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that is the case. Let's take a look here. That is the case. Those are T6. This guy up here, I think is no bigger than a T8, actually. Um, and, you know, uh, ZT did weird combinations of, like, massively oversized hardware, and then they did little teeny tiny things. There's probably 
it looks like, yeah, so there's the screws that come through to the other side. This was really common back then for ZT. So there are definitely gonna be some more screws underneath here, which are also likely T6. Pretty simple construction. So if you are gonna hunt this down and you wanna take it apart, you probably won't have that much of an issue with it. Let's weigh it. Um, is there weight reduction on the inside? Hmm. My guess is no, and I'm correct. There is no weight reduction. There are pockets milled. For, there is a pocket milled to receive this um, carbon fiber inlay, but eh, it's, it's going to be heavy. Yeah, 7.5 ounces. So there you go. But that was, that was ZT, right? ZT made big, beastly, thick knives. Everything they did. Every collab they did. Even if R.J. Martin, you know, back then was, you know, making his, uh, this, this variant of knife, which, what is it? This is the, please forgive me. I have so much knife information bouncing around in my head. Is it the Q36? Is that, or at the Q, I can't remember. Something like that. I'm sure he has a bunch of models that look like this. Um, but uh, even if his actual custom variant was not this thick or this massive, which I honestly don't know, ZT's version of it was definitely going to be a big old chunky fat boy. That's just what it was going to be, right? So, Anyways, um, is that it? Can we get into the meat and potatoes? Okay, so uh, the most recent collab that I have from RJ Martin is the Shirogorov and RJM Soft Overkill, which you can see is a shorter knife. Definitely, definitely, definitely has a thinner blade stock and is way thinner behind the edge. The other thing that I like about this is that it's a straight edge. A lot of R.J. Martin's, in fact, most of R.J. Martin's designs are recurves, which to me is the only thing aesthetically holding this knife back. I really wish that it had a straight edge, but you know what? It doesn't, and it was it, it was it came out in 2012, so what are you going to do? It's not like I can complain that away. It just is. That's what you're going to get with this knife. You're going to get a recurve, and you're going to get a freaking thick <laughs> recurve. Oh, my God. This thing is so thick behind the edge, and this, you know, if you're looking at this and going, oh, that edge doesn't look that great. 2012, right? This was pretty much par for the course. Uh, but it was still considered thick back then. And then it just comes down here. And people are going to complain about the end of this grind. And then what are you going to do, right? Um, it, you know, again, this was 2012. This is what you can expect if you're going to hunt this knife down. It is crazy thick. It is not a great cutter, and it does not accentuate the properties of this steel. If they are, in fact, similar to CPM 154, it does not do that well. It's just kind of, the steel was just like, let's throw something interesting on there and then make it massively thick. That was the name of the game for ZT. So if you're planning on buying this and not throwing it in a display case and actually using it, because it is absolutely designed to be used, um, it's just not <laughs> efficient. Just expect this to not cut very well. It really is not going to cut very well. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. Gosh, does the rest of it look good though? The combination of that texturing on the titanium and the transition to this inlay, which is slightly above the titanium and that's on pur purpose. And then ZT's carbon fiber has always been really nice. I've always really appreciated their carbon fiber. Fit and finish is really good as far, you know, like the, the detent is a little weak. This area of the cutting edge doesn't look all that great. Um, but uh, the, the actual execution of all of these, everything fitting together and just looking clean, it really is nice. There's a nice tumbled finish on the blade or there's going to be a uh, DLC coating. I'm sorry, I have my fingerprints all over this, so I'm going to get rid of that real quick. A nice DLC coating on this one, or at least that's what I assume that it is. Um, but yeah, everything looks really nice and there was nothing sloppy here. Like, I mean, except for this area right here on the edge and how thick the edge is, the rest of the knife is really nice. There's a flat that carries out about 80% the length of the blade and there is a massive amount of material held, you know, or, or maintained out to the tip. It's a, sh it's a sharp tip, it's a pointy tip, right? It'll it'll do if you really want it to. If you really want it to be your EDC, it'll do that. But it's like carrying a folding axe, right, or a folding hatchet. It's just that's what it's gonna feel like. Uh, ZT. I don't mind the logo over here, but of course this is Kai USA. So on this side we have a whole bunch of stuff that just doesn't look good. O six O O Kai USA serial number O Thrix. Oh, <laughs> Thrix is not a number. O three six O B seventy five P R J Martin design in the most basic font imaginable. Um, man, 
that don't like that. And they, they still do that, you know, but it's not hindering the knife in terms of how it's going to perform. The blade is, <laughs> the grind is going to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, ergonomically, wow, RJ Martin designs are freaking awesome. I touched on this when I talked about the soft overkill. This is just a uh, beautiful knife to hang on to. Really, really comfortable, nice full-size scales that really fill out the hand. It feels good. These, This texturing does actually provide some meaningful traction without being sharp. And that pocket clip was actually done really well. I like that pocket clip a lot. And it's a nice full 3D milled clip, which is something that you could expect at this tier, not on all ZT knives. This is definitely at a higher tier. Actually, I'm not sure if they classified this as a factory custom. My guess is yes, because it's very similar to the execution of the ZT0392, which I actually own. Uh, I own the black and bronze version, even though it's, I think mine has the silver hardware uh, that I swapped out. But uh, that knife was also about 390, 400 bucks, the Hinder collab. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that this was part of the factory custom series. So it definitely is a step up from their regular production stuff from that time and would absolutely be a step up from their regular, regular production stuff now. They just don't, they don't do stuff like this, right? They don't make you know, <laughs> they don't do it like this, right? They just don't. It's not not necessarily bad. It's just factually they don't they don't make stuff like this. So it's cool to see a nice three D milled uh, clip on this guy. But wow, the ergonomics are great. You can choke back here, still get four uh, fingers on the knife if your hands are like mine, right? I wear an XL glove. If your hands are three XL, then I guess this is gonna feel really tiny, and you need a cold steel four max. There, I said it. Cold steel fans, he keeps taking everything away from us. <laughs> it's because you guys all say the same thing under every video, right? You've been doing it for four years on this channel. Yeah, plenty of room to grip it. You can choke up here, but I wouldn't. This is a really dangerous spot considering it's kind of like a water slide into a thick blade, right? It's thick, but it's definitely still something capable of cutting your finger, so I would not choke up here. I do appreciate this ramp, some meaningful jimping right there. Just feels really, really good. I also appreciate that there's a captive pivot, which is something that I think ZT still does, right? Uh, moving on here, we already talked about the overlay. There is plenty of access to this lock bar and no double clutch. It's honestly, outside of the underpowered detent, it's actually pretty fun and simple to manipulate. So for all of you couch ninjas out there, that includes me, this is actually kind of a joy to fidget with, right? It's just it's good stuff. Um, we have a uh, simple titanium backspacer that looks really nice. We have this uh, beautifully done lanyard slot thing that is totally out of the way of everything else that is substantially more important, which is literally every other part of the knife. So lanyard folks, you can put your dingly danglies off the end of that, right, if you really want to. And then the rest of us can enjoy the um, proper position of the pocket clip because it doesn't have to watch out for anything else. The pocket clip looks a little bit weird. Um, like I appreciate that it's 3D milled, but it just it's the, it's the one part of the knife that looks like it it didn't really go with this knife, but it it does work really well, right? It's it's nice. You got a couple of T6 screws there. It's got its own spot. There's even a spot on this side for left-handed folks. So you know if you're a lefty and you're like I really want that, then you can carry it left-handed and just manipulate the front. As you can see here, you can manipulate it like this, right? So that's nice. Um, the texturing does provide traction, but it's not its not bitey enough that I really feel like it's gonna tear up your pants. And fortunately, they made this flat with a nice ramp, so in and out of the pocket should be pretty easy. There is a steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop, which is nice. This is uh, something that was made around the time where ZT was having some troubles with lockup geometry on some of their knives. A lot of people, you know, they find the old videos or the old posts on blade forms and they assume that everything that ZT ever made was having issues. No, uh, some of it was. This, not feeling any lock stick or slip there. Same with this one actually. Yeah, it feels totally fine. Looking at the geometry, it doesn't really surprise me. It doesn't look like this is quite as slanted as some of those issues that were, or some of those models that were having issues. You can see the contact there is probably about 40%. Same with this knife. Can we see it? Yeah, there's a dark spot there at about 40%. So the lockup feels pretty good on these two. But again, your mileage may vary. If you're like, I'm gonna buy that knife so that I can baton wood in half with the spine of the blade, 
I probably not. I, I don't think that's a good idea, right? So just, you know, use your head. Use your knife as a knife. But factually, there were some knives from ZT during this time period that had some issues with lockup geometry. So just be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, this is also around the time where not everything from Zero Tolerance's line had a lock bar insert. I remember distinctly um, the, the ZT Hinderer 0560, which was meant to be kind of the XM24 of the ZT Hinderer family. Uh, there were versions of that knife that did not have an insert, and there were a few of them that had an insert. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was sometime around 2011, 2012, when this started to take place. So I think all of these 0600s have lock bar inserts, but I'm not 100% certain on that. So there you go. No lock stick whatsoever on either of these guys. Let's check for pivot lash. Nope. Extremely smooth. Very smooth. And then you have that, it's more of a thud, right? Centering, bam, spot on. How about this guy? Let's give this guy a go here. Exactly the same. And a thud. And also, dead center, uh, detent lash, no. Really expected there to be detent lash with how mushy that felt, but no, there's no detent lash. So, what are you gonna pay for these on the secondary market? I have no idea. I remember seeing one on eBay that was over a grand. I just checked right before this video and there's nothing on eBay right now. I am not going to set a secondary market price. I honestly have no idea what the person who bought these paid for them. And I have no idea what some people will price them at, right? They will price them for whatever they will sell for. That's the name of the game. That's how it's gonna go, right? If you are seeking this out on the secondary market and you want to know how good of an EDC knife is it versus what we have available today, this thing is a big, chunky, clunky beast, right? The main reason to pick this up is to add it to your collection because it's a piece of Knife World and ZT history and it was designed by a famous knife maker, right? Um, but uh, yeah, that's... That's really it. It's cool and it functions well enough. It's fun to sit around and fidget with. It's fun. It's a. It, it's an interesting thing to have. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're a knife collector in general, or you're specifically a ZT collector, if you're somebody who collects rare ZTs, this is pretty much a must-have for your collection. All right. And anybody who's down in the comments who specifically collects rare uh, sprint runs or factory custom knives, um, they they probably do own this or are currently seeking to own it, right? And they probably don't care too much if it's not, you know, up to modern standards. It's it's definitely more of a collector piece. Now, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay out the butt for this thing, right? What you're going to pay for it is nowhere close to what it actually feels like in terms of materials, right? Um, it feels like a nice knife with some corkiness and just a terrible cutting geometry. Um, but, uh, I think they probably had it priced correctly back then. Price nowadays, I have no idea. It's totally off the, it's totally just wackadoodle now. So I don't know, but yeah, I mean, just if you're seeking out like a good EDC knife, like this is far from it. It's way too big, way too thick behind the edge. And you might potentially be, and this is just from what I have read and what I have come to understand, you might potentially be risking a lockup geometry issue. I doubt very many of these have been taken out and tested given how few they did and what caliber of, you know, what caliber these are in, right? So, uh, but these are completely and totally out of production. So complaining about that now is just kind of pointless. This is really interesting and I don't often get to add knives or knife videos to my ZT playlist because I just haven't handled a lot of stuff here lately from Zero Tolerance, but I'm glad to add this one to the library and I'm hoping that I covered everything that you might have wanted to know about these things. Um, I, uh, I just enjoy visiting past knives um, that remind me of my initial journey into the knife world. For a lot of people watching, this knife is probably the same to you. You probably remember seeing this thing in stock for $400 at Blade HQ and thinking, wow, that is a freaking expensive ZT, right? So anyways, Fun video. Thanks so much to Ben for 
uh, sending this in for me to take a look at. These will absolutely go back to Ben. I am not, I don't get to keep these. Uh, be sure to check out Zero Tolerance Knives down in the description. They absolutely do have some things that I very much like, uh, and they do definitely still make high quality US knives. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.